My guest is Janet Lynn Mitchell. We have the responsibility, but we also have the choice to decide what words we're going to place upon our child's heart. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today my guest is Janet Lynn Mitchell. Thank you. She is the author of Words Matter, What We Say, Pray, and Write Can Change Our Families. Now this sounds like a very important book. I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah good. So what, why did you see the need for this book? Well, I had been in a Bible study and we were learning about words and it seemed like um, even evangelists on television were telling us as parents we needed to watch our words and telling us what scripture said. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought, well, you know, scripture does say that in, in words it holds the power of life and death. And I, I thought, well, my goodness, we, we teach our kids how to speak. This is a cat, dog. We teach them um, grammar. Mm -hmm. But do we teach our kids the power of our words? And do we teach them for power for the positive or the negative? Either we'll receive God's blessings and be successful in, in relationships and um, in, in our peers, or, or we won't be successful and we'll reap the, the consequences of our words. And That's so I thought really we've got to teach point. our kids. Right. I'd never thought about that, the fact that we teach them all these other things, but we don't teach them the power right. of their words. If it's true, which it is true because Scripture says that God listens to our every conversation and we're accountable for our words. And then if it tells us that, you know, not to gossip, and here is why, because it will separate friends, and if it tells us that we will sow, or we will reap what we sow, and it will tell us that what we think in our heart, what we say to ourselves over and over and over again, we will become. Mm -hmm. If all this scripture comes with consequences, then we need to tell our kids. They need to be informed. They need to know that they are going to be a product of what they, they think what they say, actually they're a product of what we tell them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Your first chapter is titled, From Your Mouth to Your Child's Heart. And you say that the words we say, pray and write, so influence our kids that in many ways they become a product of our words. Right. Talk about that. Well, our, our words are the words we speak to our children. They will become. And so I think we have the responsibility, but we also have the choice to decide what words we're going to place upon our child's heart. They're like wet cement. We have the, the power to decide what we're going to imprint on our children. Um, I think as speakers, we have um, just a couple minutes before a crowd will decide if they're going to listen to us. Mm -hmm. and, and here's your whole circle. 10% of what you say to them is your words. 90% in communication is how you say it, what you look like when you're saying it, mm -hmm. your mannerisms. That's true. So a crowd's going to look at us, Jeannie, and they're going to say, yeah, I'm going to listen to her. Or they're going to be turned off and not listen to us within the mm -hmm. first couple minutes by how they perceive us. As parents, our kids do the same thing, but they don't give us three minutes. They give us 15 seconds, 45 seconds. Yeah. They can determine by our mannerism and by our tone if they're going to hear us or if they're not going to hear us. And if they're not hearing us, then we as mom and dad need to re-figure things out. We need to re-communicate in a way that they're going to hear what we have to say, mm -hmm. um, rather than just haphazardly um, hope that they hear what we say. That's true. You share that it's a parent's responsibility to teach their children about God, and you share a tip you include in the chapter talking to God. So what is that? Oh, talking to God is, is great. It, it includes everything from teaching your toddler how to pray, you know, teaching them to, to say one word at a time, I'm thankful mm -hmm. for, and then you go into um, sentence prayers, and then you go into, you know, asking a child to lead the dinner prayer, the dinner thanks, and praying for your dog that's lost, and mm -hmm. um, two, actually teaching our kids how to have a right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, there were feasts, there were sacrifices, and parents brought their children to these events. And children saw their parents get and resume a right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Well, 
we don't have that now. We have, you know, the blood of Jesus. But how many of us parents have taught our children through our example of getting into a right relationship with God, of just forgiveness? Um, so many of us don't even ask our children to forgive us when we've offended them. And, you know, that confuses our kids because then they don't know if they're not worthy of, of, of that mm -hmm. or if it's not important. But we need to teach our children both to ask the Lord to forgive them so that they can be in a right relationship with God mm -hmm. and to teach them how to ask others to forgive and in words matters I give different examples it's like a family going on a journey mm -hmm. it's like um, when you're asking God to forgive you and one example is writing down what you did and if the child can't write to color you know mm -hmm. an example and then actually burning it in the fireplace and asking Jesus to forgive him so the child can see that it's gone they don't mm -hmm. have to carry it they need to see that God is a God who loves them who wants to be involved in their lives who's worthy of honor but that they can experience his forgiveness as well. That's right, that's great. Well, one of the problems that, that we'll often hear adults talk about is that when they were growing up, their parents or other significant people in their lives said things to them that they then owned and exactly. have affected them their whole lives. And this, this whole idea of forgiveness that you talk about um, if they don't learn that in childhood, then they have to learn it as adults. And I think it's a little bit harder when it's been imprinted on you. Right. So what would you say to parents so that they would keep that from happening with their children? Well, our kids need to know that not everything that is said about them is true. You know, so-and-so mm -hmm. said this about me and I'm so upset. Well, is that, is that trait true in you? Well, no, it's not. Um, the other thing is, is that we need to teach our kids that they can guard their thoughts. Because mm -hmm. someone says something to you, our kids don't have a clue that they are ownership. They are commander of what they're going to allow themselves to think. And by them not knowing that, they can think, I'm a failure, I'm no good, I'm a failure, I'm no good. They can repeat it over and over and over. Scripture says what you think in your heart, so you will become. Mm -hmm. So if we can help our children, if we can recognize that, if we can teach our kids about thoughts, let them know that they're going to have these thoughts, mm -hmm. and then give them what Scripture says about them in replacement and have them say that over and over and over mm -hmm. again help them to realize that negativity is a choice. That just as they are choosing to, to think a negative thought or to um, say a negative word, they can choose to say a positive one. And when we repeat the positive, it will happen, it will become, we mm -hmm. will become. Yeah, and it's the power of God that actually helps us to do that because you're at a point sometimes where, mm -hmm. I mean, you might have good reasons for discouragement mm -hmm. and that might make you feel like a failure. Even, even as a child, I remember feeling failure just so, mm -hmm. it was such a heavy burden. And if you, you know, you might have your parents saying, oh, well, that's not true about you, that's not true, but it was still hard for you to believe. And we have to remember that the enemy of our souls is out there to mm -hmm. try and discourage us. and right. But do our kids know that there's an enemy? We need to make you know, sure they know we that. We need to make yes. sure that they know that. And we need to make sure that they know that just because something bad has happened to them, they don't have to live in that pain every day for the next day, the next day. Because every day they continue to, they're just robbing, that pain is robbing another day. Mm -hmm. And the next day they could be used to do something great or, or something great could happen. But if they are still living back here with this pain, this worry, That's right. you know, Scripture even talks about how to deal with a bully. In the sense it says, you know, to watch your words, to be silent, to be calm, and then what will happen? That, that it will be taken care of. Um, it, we need to train our kids. We need to teach our kids to know what to do about the bully. We mm -hmm. need to teach them about, you know, text messaging. Everything is so instant. Well, what are they saying? One negative thing they say can ripple through a whole community, and then they can mm -hmm. be sorry. Yeah. We can teach them by what they say to their peers how to be well-liked. We can teach them in junior high when our girls are having the crisis of their lives, if, if we <laughs> tell them that if you don't gossip, you'll have more friends because scripture says gossip separates the friends. Mm -hmm. And we can empower them to know what to do when the group is gossiping. Mm -hmm. You know, we can empower them to, um, 
to make their friend feel better about who they are when they leave than to tell your friend all about you. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can, through words, empower our kids. Right. And teach mm -hmm. them to be encouragers, too. Exactly. Just like we're trying to do with that. Actually, what happens is our kids become little missionaries mm -hmm. just by the things that they communicate. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Well, how can the power of words negatively affect our family relationships? Oh my goodness, we can put down, we can say negative things about each other, we can decide that um, doors are going to be slammed and you're an idiot and you're a <laughs> fool and I, it's just craziness. But you know, once we can sit a family down and mm -hmm. have some family discussion about how does it make you feel, you know, when someone calls you this, and, and then to explain to our kids that each of us are made in God's image, mm -hmm. then you're not just saying that this person is an idiot or this person is crazy. You're saying what God created is That's good. Right. <laughs> and so I think we bring it to a higher level. Mm -hmm. But we also can find, you know, can, can realize that Scripture says there's consequences for this behavior. Mm -hmm. And the consequences are ultimately that your child will not be liked or, or that it will have conflict with friends. Um, mm -hmm or that he will just become who he hangs around with. He, you know, Proverbs says, be careful who you hang around with. The wise will become wise. Have your kids stop and think about who is influencing them. Mm -hmm. And are their friends just polluting them with trash? I actually give an example of someone bringing trash and just dumping it on your front lawn every day. And how, that would make me, me mad. <laughs> yeah. And my kids, boy, they would just be furious. They'd watch out the window to see who's going to dump the trash and who's been mm -hmm. doing it. Why should we let our friends, why should we let the people around us just dump trash and trash into our lives every day? No. Mm -mm. No, because Scripture says we will become like it. It will have an effect on us. Yeah, and bad company corrupts good character. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Is there anything else that you would like to say to, well, is it mostly women that this is written for, or is it for whole families? Oh, or? it's it's for whole families. Okay. Um, you know, I go, even there's a couple other things I'd, I'd just like to share. Okay. You go from the thought of how does sarcasm fit into your home, you know? Mm -hmm. It's okay, I'm just a little sarcastic. Well, sarcasm comes from the root word, the Greek word, to tear the flesh. Ooh. And it's really intended to taunt someone or to put someone down. And children don't know how to take sarcasm. They don't know if you're, is he telling the truth? Is, is that real? Yeah. They don't know how to take it. And then they don't feel safe, you know, with mm -hmm. that any longer. So Teasing is another thing. Oh, um, exactly. My, my daughter, when she was little, had a little nightgown that said, please don't tease. She mm -hmm. hated being teased. Mm -hmm. And my husband likes to tease. And so, you know, she would wear that and she'd say, please don't tease. <laughs> Right. Because, you know, she didn't, you know, he, he has a real dry sense of humor. So at times you couldn't tell when he was teasing. Right. Well, if you have one child that is a teaser, you might ask him, how his, is his teasing blessing mm -hmm. his siblings or the one Because our teasing. word should bless. That's right. Or how is it honoring God? Mm -hmm. You know, the, this book contains ideas of, of words that parents pray for their children, um, teaching your children about prayer, um, words we speak, and then words we write. And the last thing I, I would like to share is whether you read the book or not, um, I encourage your listeners to leave a legacy for their children. Um, in here I have examples on how to write your testimony and what to include. But your kids need to know um, what you believe and why you believe it. And then I say if you're writing a will, to go ahead and write your children a letter because you don't know, you know, what we're, what we're given are to, is today. We're not given tomorrow. And yet there's things I'm sure you want your children to, to know about you and there's dreams you have for your children. So I encourage you to write it down and um, just to make sure that you review with your kids what they say, pray, and write can honor God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for being our guest. Now, tell everybody where they can find you online. They can find me, or you can find me at JanetLynnMitchell.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. You're welcome.